with cookies when using it. Okay, wasn't sure if that was a widespread problem or not. Okay. Wanted to also ask um, how, so I, I've gotten a lot of feedback on how people are doing in terms of their stores on the marketplace and like the web place marketplace. But I'm curious, how, how are people doing in world? Like if you, if you go to events, if you have an in world store or you use a vending system, um, how have things been over the past couple of months? Like positive or generally negative? You have a, a story that you operate in world, obviously.
speaking of that, syntax, yep. who would be behind changing Casperven's naming convention? Because with all the issues that have arisen recently and people clutching, uh, anyway, just reacting really negatively and actually dropping the vendor system, which is owned by Linden Lab now and has been for quite some time, I think that perhaps a name change would be beneficial to the lab overall. And because you have the ability to change the things in our inventories, nothing would actually have to happen other than it would appear as something different. Okay, so when you say naming convention, you don't mean just renaming Casper Ben to something else? Yeah, exactly that, just renaming it. I mean, it would it's be above, it would be definitely above my pay grade. I have a question about that, Sassy. Would it also promote speculation about why things have changed and encourage people to make assumptions about the reasoning behind it, too? It, let me ask a question real quick, because I'm, I'm curious. Mm -hmm. it, it, is anybody uses Casper Bend here? Have you actually noticed a difference? No, I haven't noticed a difference, but... Uh, no, but people were taught. I mean, I I don't see any difference. There's mm -hmm. no difference, and I don't really I don't really care. I bought Casper Vend, uh, the system, the day you bought it. That's when I bought it because I said, okay, I'm going to use that instead of the system that I'd paid for and was already using and was quite happy with. I decided to support Linden Labs' purchase. Um, so I have no problem there. There's, you know, I wasn't planning on jumping ship. I wasn't planning on doing anything. It's just staying. But I feel like that uh, that people might actually, people were talking about boycotting stores that still use it. People were doing all that. And hopefully that's all just, you know, gone the way of many things that, that get blown up. But I just think that it is Linden Lab owned now. It isn't tied to... Uh, the previous ownership. So I think I, even though they still in some way uh, contribute to it, I just think that there's no reason it can't just be a Linden Lab product. You're thinking like Linden Vend. also, sorry? Linden Vend or something. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, there's nothing wrong with renaming it to make it very clear that that is an actual Linden Lab product. Um, you know, like I, I kind of feel like it should have been done at the gate um, mm -hmm. so that it was clear. So sure, people can speculate all they like, but realistically, uh, there's nothing wrong with giving it an official title for it to be a Linden Lab product. That's true, yeah. Because it also, it also means that people can see that are new that are trying to start out with a store they would actually understand that, oh, Linden Lab has their own vending system. That would make me feel secure. That would make me, you know, let me look into that. that. Very true. Yeah. Although also, Sassy, a lot of the anger and a lot of the anger and confusion is also um, directed not at Casper Venn, but also Linden Labs itself. So um, the... I, I agree with you on the point that it'd be nice to give some people reassurance that it is a secure platform to sell their product. Um, but the yeah, the association part with it being people being angry at Casper Vend and people being angry at Linen Labs, they're kind of angry at both, I think, in a way, or confused rather, or afraid in a way. I just think that also a mm -hmm. lot of people that were uh, coming in on the tail end of a lot of things are actually quite confused what's going on and all they're hearing is the Casper Bend side of things. So mm -hmm. yeah, I thanks. just think that having an official Linden Lab vending system is is not a is not a a, a lose lose. Well, I don't know about renaming it, um, and I can definitely float that idea. I do know that we are planning on more being more integrated with Casper Event instead of just simply owning it. Right. 
because it, it, it needs to be, there's a lot of cleaning up that needs to happen with it too and, and integrating both systems together because there are some pluses in the Casper Ben system that would be wonderful if they were put into the way we list for marketplace. Um, I've mentioned it before that a good editing suite where you can actually bold and color and capitalize, uh, you know, underline and italic and all of that, that's already in Casper Ben system. Um, also the fact that you can just use a UUID uh, to put the image on your vendor in the listing portion would be great to be able to do that in Marketplace as well instead of having to upload a whole other texture. I didn't, but a hell of a lot of people did. I did notice a lot of people did switch. What would um, what was the popular alternative that people went with? There was a few. MD Lab was probably the number one. That's what I went from to Casper Ben. Had no problem with MD Lab. I'm just saying that I, you know, went with Linden Labs. Um, uh, the MD then Alamancy, I think, was the second top choice. Right, same. I, I used MD Labs when uh, A2V went down. What do you like about MD Labs over any other vendor system? Um. Having used both now, I uh, management tools, uh, being able to add uh, items and send directly is a lot more streamlined in MD Labs than it is with the Casper Ben system. Um, to be able to just send an item to somebody that didn't buy it, um, which is a very you know, well, interesting, yeah. It's something we do quite a lot as store owners in SL. Uh, sure, you can send to bloggers and things like that, but the ability to actually put it in the system so that they they can get redeliveries and things like that is is always preferable for me. It's very easy to do it in MD Labs. Not so easy to do it. Uh, I had to actually call for support to find out how to do it. And then just recently I had a customer gift something to somebody else and, and they accidentally bought for themselves. And so they told me who it was for. And as I was trying to put it in, it just kept telling me that the person doesn't exist when I was in IM with the person. So uh, I just had to manually send it to them from my inventory. And I've never had that issue with, with the other program. Um, yeah, just just different things. I really, really do like the the Casper Ben system, though. So, I I wouldn't say that one is a hundred times better. It's just that the MD Labs one is constantly adding features because the guy is really hands on. And I, I would worry also uh, because, again, timeline, as I said, that people don't necessarily even know that you did buy it, that it is yours, another reason for the name thing, so that it is clear that it's, you know, under that. That being said too, I've listed a few stores in many systems. So it's the experiences from having to do sometimes a whole store with a new system, thousands of items in one. So I actually um, preferred the website part um, instead of in world, but I can understand why both is, is preferable as well.
Okay, so it seems kind of like for most people in the the meeting today that your in-world sales have been more or less the same and haven't exactly gone up or down. I don't I don't think they're the same. I think that they've dropped quite considerably for a lot of stores and and a lot of stores are only in events because they can't get people to their stores anymore otherwise. It used to be I, and I'm sure everybody here is old enough to have this experience as well. Um, it used to be that Marketplace was more used as a, like a catalogue and then people would actually go to the store and buy the item. Um, but now it's different. Okay, so maybe sales are down more for in-world if you're not participating in events? Right because there's so much going on now that people just don't spend the day teleporting from place to place and enjoying everything about a main store that that they used to it's teleport 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 or or it, it's just so intense now yeah it would that's a really good point um, Icarus, it'd be really nice if there was a one, one section place to update your, your slurl to your store so that you didn't have to do it in every post. I know that it is under account though, I think. To be fair, I see that in people's profiles. Yeah, <laughs> it's like you can teleport to their profile as well, and that also doesn't take you to their store. Okay, uh, I have a couple other questions I want to get through. Um, so, question for the group at large: Have you tried using generative AI to make any three three D world objects before? Any part of the process of, of making a 3D object? What's everybody's general like take on it? Do we think it's kind of like overblown or do we feel like it's, it could be useful or? If someone did make like a 3D object that they put on their marketplace store using like AI, would do you think it, do you think it should be like marked in a certain way? I think it's a good thing, a bad thing. We did discuss this before that we we would want an AI uh, flag tag, however, um, but that was even before they were starting to talk about mesh being AI generated. We were sort of talking about images and and things like that because some people have an issue with it, some people don't have an issue with it. Um, if if you've noticed a lot of people are using AI for their vendor ads these days, so. Yeah, I have that, noticed that. that. Yeah, and then some people are selling uh, AI generated art, which I have no problem with at all. I think that that's quite creative. I'd rather see that than them ripping images off the internet that belong to other people. I do think that it has a place for generating ideas and kind of giving people more of a creative outlet for like getting the images from their mind onto like an actual product because you could just think of like, oh, I want to make a pauldron, but how do I want to make it? How do I want, you know, 
is it going to be made out of stained glass or metal? It's, you know, I think it provides people more creative freedoms if they're really good at engineering the prompt, you know, and then taking that draft into Blender and creating something similar. So it does end up being original content. It just takes a lot of process. Can give you like a jumping off point. Yeah, it gives you, yeah, it gives you a starting point because not everyone, you know, if people have like a mental block or, you know, they, they can crank out a whole bunch of ideas and save them for later. And on a rainy day when they're feeling kind of down and not as creative, they can take from that and work on something and it keeps their, you know, store efficient with releases. The thing is that there's, I mean, so many real life industries are using AI to speed up their process and, and they don't seem to have a problem with it, but second lifers can get quite upset. Uh, it's, it, it, I mean, there'd be no difference to what Mutiny is saying to me buying a day file from a full perms content creator and then taking it into Blender and, and, and you know shortening a sleeve lengthening a skirt doing something like that and bringing it back and mm -hmm. then it's you know my creation sort of thing um people look at things differently like that same with buying models it i guess it sort of opens up that too like if you're going to tag ai are we going to start tagging people that buy uh work or have their stuff outsourced to other other things um, I guess it was the visuals that were kind of concerning for people versus mesh because mesh is a lot of work, even if you do get, um, um, an AI generation of it. Do you actually have a few suggestions for that? In terms of tagging things as AI on the marketplace, um, I don't have a strong opinion of it. I, I would defer to whatever most creators think we should do. This one here is actually free and it's really nice for just kind of generating ideas to work off of and kind of formatting your thoughts into something that might actually be viable. So it's nice. I know people are using AI for scripting in SL. Uh, do you have an example? Uh, they're actually using it to script things. So somebody like just a getting uh, ChatGPT or something. And, yeah, yeah, they're using it to create scripts because they they don't know how to script themselves. So they're asking ChatGPT to do for them, and it's doing good work. I have an example of um, something that I generated um, to kind of get an idea of like a mask that I wanted to create that was utilizing like organics and stained glass so then i oh, can okay. take that and mesh it so it gives you kind of an idea of so you have like a, a person yeah so you have like a, a 2d image that you use generative ai to give you like a a brainstorm yeah, to make a 3d yeah. object okay exactly it's definitely good for inspiration mm -hmm. um oh uh, yeah that's what i was looking sometimes for sometimes too and then it's just you know if you actually already have the mesh skills to be able to then go, oh, I need to make that now, you know, definitely great for that. Your own sort of fake Pinterest mood board suite. <laughs> you know, people who have like um, creators who have like buckets and buckets of folders with all the stuff they plan on making using all those ideas that they get, you know? <laughs> Also, um, Sassy, I had a question for you. Have you noticed whenever you go to an event, you see a lot of dresses that look identical? It's like a very specific style of dress where it's like a shrink wrap tube on the body. You know, I'd love to see some more creativity and ideas and layers and depth to the design of things. It's of, of course, it's okay if you're like starting out and you're just learning how to mesh, but a lot of people use it as an excuse to like fill their events with like... Um, the same there are, are a few reasons for it though there's a few yeah. reasons for that one 
there was a tube dress tutorial <laughs> that was quite famous. Yes. So everybody's first clothing release was a tube dress, which is, yeah, that's actually quite but a But I've seen stores old... that are entirely tube dresses, entirely full of tube dresses. Right. Well, you, just, you work with yeah. what you know. But the other thing is rigging. People find oh, yeah. that it's very hard to rig past the uh, crotch area. Um, and then I'm not I sure where one. it is now, Syntax, but it's just like one of those old sort of jokes through the, the creative thing. If I can find it, I'll, I'll send it to you. Um, yeah, I'd appreciate and, that. and then the other one is that, um, and this is a personal belief stance, so you can have your own opinions on it, but the fact that we didn't have bomb until 2019 is responsible for the clothing that we have in a lot of ways because people were reliant on alpha cuts so their creations are based on the cuts on people's specific bodies that they support so if you want to do a sleeve that's somewhere between the elbow and the wrist you have to do it where the alpha cut is so there's no scope of you can't do a v-neck plunging neckline you couldn't you can now because of bomb alphas but you've got some creators that will not make bomb alphas so they still really rely on the alpha huds because their customer base also won't use an alpha layer so they can't do a plunging v-neck front or a plunging back because they can't hide it under the clothes i found it i found the tutorial <laughs> <laughs> the tube dress tutorial. I actually have like a whole folder dedicated to just taking pictures of tube dresses to make it a hobby because I just see them so often. I just, I don't want to be sad about it. I want to be like, yay, I found something for my collection. So that's, I that's either... not the tube dress tutorial, but that's yes, a tube dress. Yes, but it's a, yeah. The, the original one was like 2013 or something, but yeah. Oh, yeah. There's a lot of them out there. <laughs> Okay, uh, another question I was curious everybody's opinion on. So I, I've kicked around the idea of allowing merchants to set on their store page top featured items or like these are my, because like right now it's powered by search, right? Where we have certain sorts where it's like new or best selling. Um, so I, I, my, my idea was is thinking something along the lines of, Kind of how like featured items work on the front page but like you can have your own featured items on your store page yep. um i'm curious if anybody else thinks that would be a good idea and, and yep. if you do like how, how would you kind of structure it it would be a marvelous yep. idea i think <laughs> a thousand times yes so that means that regardless of if somebody wants to select the best selling oldest first price low to high however they want to have that drop down your top four or five or whatever will still be at the top like they're pinned yes pinning it would be uh, a good example times, yes it would i was thinking something like it could be separate from the actual like search sort like it sits on top mm -hmm. um yeah. i'm curious like but how many items would you want to feature like five more than that less uh, than that five is reasonable five is pretty I reasonable I think I would do it the same. Personally, I would do it however many there is at the uh, across wise on a regular post, because a lot of people like me suffer from banner blindness. So, so if things, so if things go askew, it it changes it. But you could do it the way you do the. Uh, you know how you have that section at the top yep. of the the main page that is a scrolling thing. Yes, it was ex uh, the exact same items. thing. Yeah, you could just do featured items on in each individual's top. It, it it could look exactly like that. Don't change it. Just add the code to everybody's page. Thanks. <laughs> would you put things that are um, things that you sell the most or would you put like newer items in there, a mix of it? I would definitely, definitely mix it up. Yeah. Because a lot of people, a lot of people only sought by newest first or only by best selling and they could be missing gems sometimes something that's you know six years old can still be fantastic work and so you'd really want them to get um to see what you do 
Um, my marketplace, for instance, is, you know, I, I removed everything that hadn't been updated, but I do nails and I do the holdables and whatever. So you sort of want to put a collection because if the last 15 releases have all been one type of thing, then if people don't scroll through pages, they're never going to see what else you do. Okay. I remember back in the day, people used to make their own little stores utilizing HTML and just kind of um, building a little, like, not a not a web page, not a whole web page, but like a little note card at the bottom of their, like, forum posts. So it'd be like a little, it'd be like a little tab with all of their socials and things, because I know that you can feature your in-world store and whatnot, but to have the ability to kind of feature all of the information necessary to buy the products or like give it, making it modular where you can have an image, you can have like a product or you can have like information, like a text information area. It would be kind of nice to have like just a little space at the top of the store to kind of personalize it in a way. Yeah, that could be like mm -hmm. the link that's already in the post that lets you go and have a look at yeah. the video of the item. Instead of having to put it in for each item, have the video, you could have an actual link at the top of your page that goes to your YouTube where your feet, where your yeah, that's where all your all tutorials are. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, so, that'd be nice. So it could go to your mm -hmm. Insta, go to your actual website, because I have a, a store website. A lot of older creators have store websites as well, because that was a thing. We used to have a feed for that. Um, so if you want to know how something actually works, it's a lot of information to put in Marketplace, but if you can actually show them a tutorial or step-by-step -step information, also oh, who to my contact goodness, if you yes. need help. That's another thing. They need a place like, yeah, like to make it modular with a text. It gives, it provides so many options because a lot of people have like a note card. They have to copy and paste this giant note card of all the information about their products into every single item. Mm -hmm. Yep. And it's like you have, if you have like just a link tree at the top with like, you know, their stuff, then it would be, it would be really easy to distribute the information. It would be really nice. So speaking go of, uh, info. sorry, go. Being able to like set your own items and thumbnails. When I remember talking last time about when you have a, a favorite stores list, it has a random selection of thumbnails that so we couldn't figure out w why it was setting those. Um, if you couldn't select each item in that thumbnail, would you prefer it being your newest items, your best-selling items? I think that the best selling got got a sort of a thumbs down because it what it wasn't historically accurate. So mm -hmm. a store that's as old as some of us, uh, their best selling item could be in two thousand and nine and could be a sculpty because we used to have a hundred thousand people log in. You know what I mean? So at the time, it, that item could have gone viral so to speak and sold 50,000 mm. units um but only maybe sold 3 in the last 10 years so that item shouldn't be automatically in that thumbnail that's what i should be more like before. best yeah. selling over the last 30 days or something like that yeah that would work i guess i mean it's an it's an alternative option for sure I wouldn't say yes. lock it in, but yeah, it's definitely better because like I said, you've got some creators that back in the day, they were selling huge amounts of content. My guess though, is that if given the choice, we would all prefer to be able to set those individually yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Because again, there's, there's also some items that are creepers. It's, it's really funny that I think nearly every store has one item that will just randomly sell, you know, a handful a week, but consistently for 10 years versus another item that will sell, you know, a thousand units in the first week and then might only sell one every six months after that. So, you know, it, it's, they, they w might want to give that the status that it deserves because it's always been a seller kind of thing.
Linktree is the most efficient and well-trusted um, link shortener for URLs to like compile a whole bunch. I have one right on my profile. So it like, compiles a whole bunch of your information. Linktree is like a very, you could probably add that feature for link trees. Link trees are very reputable and it's free to use and modify and it's pretty sturdy and, it and looks pretty. doesn't break. Yeah, it doesn't break every five minutes. <laughs> so that's a big what we, plus. <laughs> what we really do need still, and we ask about this every so often, we really need the ability to click a link in a note card and it's open. And not oh, have to interesting. do... Well we, well, we need that in everything. Everything in SL needs that because even notices, if you do the uh, square bracket, then the link and then write what it is and then close it in the square bracket, well, then it's clickable in a notice. But once the notice is archived, it's no longer clickable. And the reason that people do that and, and then send people to Flickr and, and Marketplace that way it kind of makes note, note cards redundant. So a lot of people stopped using note cards at all because they only do those links because it's easier for the customer, but then it's not easier for the customer if the customer can't click it in the moment, but wants the note card, et cetera, et cetera. Definitely external browser. Some countries have a lot of issues with uh, the way that works. So you'll end up with a lot of customer support where they say they can't open things internally. So talking about the feedback portal, uh, I actually have a document here where I pull things from the feedback portal that I wish I had more information on to ask about. Um, the featured items one was a suggestion on the feedback portal. So if you uh, if you submit something to the feedback portal, it's very likely that I will bring it to this group and ask for more information on your opinion on it. I put a thing in the feedback portal about still being still really wanting the ability to click items as thumbnails and then go to my shopping cart instead of having to open the page. Still think that that's really important. I'll take a look at that one. Because I had to open 89 pages when Alaska opened a store, a separate marketplace store on sale. 89 tabs. That's redonk. The people, if they put their stuff on sale in and you could just click, click, click for a little selection box. I'm not saying that it would automatically go to your cart. I'm just saying that you could select it that way. That way, if you know, even if you're looking at something that comes in 20 colors, you can click the yellow, you can click the green, you can click the blue and then add to cart. So um, I remember talking about this last time and I had a note here for myself that I wanted to double check if I had this information correct or not. If you're looking up a store and you're using the merchant store tab on the marketplace, what name do you normally use? And I mean by what name do you normally use? Like, uh, are you trying to search for the resident name, the store name, display name? Which one do you normally try searching by? Never display name, resident name first because I'm old and store name if I don't know who, who the creator is, which is rare. The problem with store name often is that the, if you search up body, like it, say you're trying to find the legacy body. If you type in mm -hmm. legacy body or legacy, because people think that legacy, I work for mesh body and they're the creators of legacy. They think the store's name is legacy. But it's not so people type in legacy and get like 3 million different items just like for all types of products made for legacy, but not the actual body itself or the store itself. So it's extraordinarily frustrating for the owner to kind of get the marketplace situated. Or also, if you search up body, you get a whole, like, 
slew, if you're trying to look up something for like an adult body, but not necessarily pornography, you get a whole slew of pornographic images and it's right, yeah. insanely difficult to filter them. <laughs> then I have to go on Reddit and look at cats for the next hour. Legacy is a clever brand. I actually thought um, Matreya was uh, the one that makes me laugh the most because like, I can never spell it right. Whenever I'm trying oh, yeah. to search for it on the marketplace, I get something incorrectly. There's a whole slew of branding issues currently right now with Meshbody that I've been yelling at the owner about. And everyone thinks, oh yeah, Legacy's the brand. No, it's it's Meshbody and then Legacy's just the body. So it's, it's hard. <laughs> I still think it would be a really good idea if we could um, lock in our brand names like we can lock in our avatar names. I've been saying that for well over a decade now because if you've had a store with a brand name for, you know, 15 plus years and somebody comes along and just takes it, that's it. It's nothing you can do is just a little bit weird. So a brand name would be unique, uh, like a right. Um, resident name? Right. If Maybe you have like a drop-down menu. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Sassy. No worries. I was, you know, when I opened Flare, there was no Flare. I'm very meticulous about that. There was no group Flare. There was no name Flare. There was no land Flare. There was no, do you know what I mean? And now there are. And, and I don't, you know, I, I wasn't that fussed about that but there's been big brands where somebody will come along and just just take it whether they do it by mistake or or to get the association it's just it shouldn't it's not like that in real life in real life you have to pay to you know have a, a name and if the name's the same as somebody else you can't have it that's just it you can't you can add incorporated you can add and co you can do all those things but you can't just have an identical name Oh, and also, Sassy, for the marketplace search, instead of just having keywords, um, which causes a whole lot of filtering issues, maybe having like a drop down menu like the search and in the show maturity levels, having like a drop down menu and then having it be keywords or brands and then um, specific types of like clothing. So it's like we, we if did you talk want to about search, that in the past. Yeah, yeah. it's yeah. that'd be nice. If you can a just tab it over tags. to brands. Yeah. But it's it's quite it's quite hard to just say that's I mean it's like the categories the categories are crazy please please take hair out of avatar accessories hair is not an accessory okay there needs to be a revamp of the categories unreal that that is so nested and it's one of the biggest things in Second Life sales wise people relate to it. I mean, people are obsessed with the hair stores that they buy, buy from, the actual textures, you know. I can't find my red anywhere else but this brand. Like, hair is so important. It does – the fact that I run Hair Fair aside, <laughs> it was my first addiction was hair. So, you know, I'm not – I'm not – yeah, so – <laughs> exactly it's 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 a it's an av it's an avatar component it's not an accessory you know yet it doesn't have the same status as all of the other things the the avatar uh, the the categories on the sidebar really need reconditioning i think shh Gwyneth this is Rafa. <laughs> this is how I sort my inventory. So I kind of have like a categories kind of sec section where I sort things based upon like if it's an avatar feature, like if it's an avatar thing or if it's a clothing item or if it's like an accessory. So I have things very, you know, laid out sort of. <laughs> it should like be, I mean, if, you, if you're going by the current, the current categories on the sidebar, it would be more avatar appearance than... Or avatar components, yeah. It's not an accessory. It's just ridiculous. <laughs> I'm outraged. Can you tell? I'm outraged. I mean, look how many 
hair items there are, there's 221,000 hair listings and that's even if they put it in the right category. Okay. Um, I think that's a really great idea. I really love organizing like stuff and information and trying to find like the best way for how people visualize information and how they access information and what causes them to be overwhelmed. So this is like one of my favorite topics. <laughs> I was explaining that we, I was doing testing on that, the search names and search brands and found that one of the biggest, the biggest go to brands on marketplace didn't have her brand branded in her store so she wasn't getting the traffic from that i told her if her sales go up i need a cookie i think that that's something that we spoke about in the past too that that every time you do make a a, a new thing even if it's a really tiny thing you need to be putting it on the front splash page in some way there should be that communication that that things aren't always just going wrong things are really good we're doing these things and you don't promote it do you mean like uh so like today when we were cleaning up database and it slowed down unexpectedly uh we should have put it on the marketplace instead of just the sure. status blog or sure yes okay you know that people don't even know there's forums right <laughs> so the status blog and all of that there's so many residents that are just oblivious to any of that but they're in marketplace and i don't even mean that it's just you know like a news reel like that you actually say we're doing this we're working on this we're we're, we're fixing this this is happening but also we did this we changed this we're we're working on this it's and and people will actually see that you know, big things are happening. You're not, because they need to know that Lyndon's are doing something and you are, you come back to every meeting and say, we've done this and we've been working on this, but they don't know. I noticed with like mesh body, like when they're working on something and they're working on a feature, if they announce it too soon or there's like a discrepancy or there's like a, um, people really start pestering them on the ETA and then it, you know, they're always like, keep it a secret because we don't want people to be, <laughs> you know, they're just, and they're like, when is it coming? When is it coming? And then there's always like a set deadline and it causes a whole bunch of stuff too with that. They do that at the meetings too, but they have that soon. <laughs> I don't really mean that you have to say we're working on this because we all know that something could take six months to two years, but at least the stuff that you have changed, the, the under oh, the yes, stuff that, that people aren't really aware has changed, it, it, it engages people with what's actually happening. And I think that that's really important because these meetings, this is my favourite of the meetings, this one because you ask questions, we answer questions. It's not just, does anybody have questions? You really engage with us and it comes through really well. So even if it is soon, we felt, we feel heard. I don't, I don't think I'm the only one here that feels that way about this one. Okay, so for example, um, when we had that outage today, it would be a good idea for us to, we do have a banner that we can post on the marketplace. Um, it would be a really good idea, instead of us always just using the blog posts, to put the banner on the marketplace that says, hey, like if you're experiencing an error page during checkout, it's fine, it's not an actual error, the transaction is going through and you are getting the item. Um, that would be really helpful because most people don't read the blog or, or know the forums exist. Yep, exactly. Because also it helps them spread the communication. Because then when somebody is in Facebook or Plurk or, or Twitter and they're going, oh, I can't get my thing to work, somebody will actually say, I was just on the website. This is what they just said or, or something like that. So, right, it, 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 it can be a, 
a real I can't see a downside to it that c- more communication is important and it's and you know even announcing this meeting every time this meeting happens because the meeting information doesn't seem to communicate sometimes they'll make an announcement that there's a Linden meeting and sometimes they don't and I think that the more people that know that you actually work every day on making Second Life better is important. Okay. Um, I agree, Sassy. That's a really good point. So I am sorry I was late today. I promise I won't be late again. <laughs> okay. uh, so I let us go a couple minutes over, but I do need to run. Um, thank you so much for coming. It does warm my heart saying, hearing you say that this is your favorite meeting. Uh, so I'm really happy to uh, see you all again. I'm looking forward to seeing you again next time. Thank you so much for being here too. There's a lot of misconceptions about voice being used on on SL with a lot of the adult work and whatnot. So people are really shy about using voice. <laughs> Most of the meetings are, are primarily voice. I think that unfortunately, sometimes that's not communicated well enough either. That people come to the meetings and don't realize it's in voice and then don't have voice or or we've actually had people that have had hearing difficulties get really upset and leave and that's such a horrible oh, feeling. No. Yeah, that's true. If there was like a way to have like an AI that would text the voice or try to like at least do a voice to text sort of feature, that would be really nice incorporation of AI. If Linden Labs was working on that, we could have one of those bots sit in and then record what we're saying and then paste it into the local. That might be good. I wonder, I yeah. wonder how, yeah, thank you. Thank goodness Pantera records it and makes it available. Yes, for thank goodness. To to later. But also, Pantera. Um, be really interesting how AI would take all our accents in because. Oh, uh, yeah, that's very true. <laughs> Voice to text is far from perfect. I think that uh, it's, we're definitely not going to be around before it gets efficient enough to be useful sometimes. <laughs> Anyway, I'm out of here. Thank you, everybody. Have a lovely okay, week and see you I at will the see next you. meeting. Of course. Um, I am actually, uh, I wanted to mention, Gwen, that I am working on a, I'm working on a project. <laughs> and it's been a huge journey with working on this. I need to show it to you because it just, a lot of people have come together for it. There you go. I am uh, working on organizing all like the more modern stores and stuff. So there's like a category for like public resources and a category for, so it's all visually represented in a way that it's, it gives you the overall aesthetic and the, you know, the presentation. So there's like moderate or adult communities and then there's destinations. So when you click an image, it gives you the landmark and the owner and the marketplace, etc. And it's just uh it's going to be really good, but it, uh, there's a whole lot of work that goes into it and it's just me. <laughs> so, um, this is actually discord. It's, I use discord for this. So whenever you click an image, yeah, I'm making it actually. So I help people make their discords. Like I did the, uh, Seraphim HUD discord and then I, so I, I like making the discords. Yes, you should. The forms. It's like you have to enable community and then make it a form. 
If you'd like, I can invite you to it too. It's public. Um, but it's obviously not um, finished, but yeah, it's free to use too, and you can get like adult moderation and stuff. Oh. Um, hmm. There we go. I am. Um, I've been working on this thing. It's oh my god. There's a. There's a whole lot of it. <laughs> the amount of like stores that I've been to is just. It's a journey. <laughs> <laughs> 